drainage plan for the um, reconstruction of all of MDOT's welcome center properties, uh, which we have 10 across the state, um, along with uh, reconstruction of many rest areas into truck parking only sites. Um, so far, we have two welcome centers, two of the 10 that are complete, Pigeon Creek being the first one um, up on I-69 as you come in from Michigan and Kankakee on I-69. Just to give you a little bit of orientation, as MTI's mentioned, the new building location is in the lower right. So you'd be coming westbound on I-70, get off the ramp, and the building would be relocated to that location so it would face towards the other visitors. Okay, next slide. Um, so this is a kind of a final version of what this uh, rest stop is proposed to look like. So if you could go one more slide, you know, as, as Mr. McAvoy mentioned, uh, the state is building 10 of these at entrances to uh, the state of Indiana. And while the main function of this rest stop is the very functional, necessary truck parking, visitor parking, restrooms, and things like that, there is a new visitor center building that gives an opportunity for the state of Indiana to allow visitors to our state to understand a little bit about what it means to be a Hoosier. And each one of the 10 visitor centers have a unique theme and after a lot of thought uh, the theme for this visitor center is to help visitors get to know what it means to be a Hoosier through high school and Indiana basketball. So one of the things we need to do, um, what is Indiana basketball architecture like? And up on the screen you can see some of the, uh, the ones that we all are, probably have the most familiarity with. There's the, the Memorial Hall Fieldhouse in Lebanon where the movie Hoosiers was actually partially shot. Uh, Hinkle Fieldhouse, which uh, um, you know, all know that from Butler University, uh, Gamebridge Center, and, uh, you know, and, and on. So from this, one, next slide, you know, we went through and said, okay, what are some of these building materials that kind of feel historic and, and come from uh, these buildings? And it's, it's exposed uh, steel structure, the trusses that you're, you're all familiar with if you've walked into some of these old buildings. Uh, masonry, they're usually made out of brick and limestone. And they have those great hardwood floors. And they usually have uh, quite a bit of glass, um, and especially the, uh, a lot of it to let natural light in. So we kind of blended these ideas together to come up with the shape and the, uh, the idea that as you approach the building, something striking, and these, these, these arenas, these basketball buildings, they're, they're kind of in-your-face buildings. They're, they're loud and they're lively, and uh, they're intended to be uh, something uh, kind of bold. So if you go to the next slide. So this, this became the, uh, the, the, the shape of the, of the visitor center. Took the, the large trusses, which you saw in a lot of buildings, including many of the contemporary buildings. Um, the, the glass, the transparency, and the brick material. Next slide. And this will be kind of the view as you're coming off the ramp, you know, the, the view of the building. A lot of transparency, and then it gives an opportunity to, to hang uh, memorabilia inside. Uh, you might envision uh, jerseys, and uh, uh, you know, much like you might see as you, or banners, much like you might see inside of a, a historic uh, high school gymnasium. Uh, next slide. Looking at it from the back side, you can see the brick portion of the building houses uh, a lot of the, the functional components, the restrooms, the, the storage for vending, and all of the, the uh, mechanic, mechanical systems. Very uh, standard construction there. And to the right, you can see one of the, the uh, uh, picnic 
areas. There's a couple of uh, areas for people to get out at their, and want to have uh, feet outside and uh, take a walk around, around the site. As well as some of the playground areas. Next slide. Um, as you walk into the building, uh, this is, has some covering to protect people and give you a sense of enclosure. Uh, next slide. And uh, kind of the final, this is the, uh, the truckers' uh, restrooms. And uh, as uh, MTI has mentioned, they're located away from the, the main building, but with access, um, pretty standard construction, uh, very durable materials uh, to last uh, a very long time. Next slide. I think that's it. Oh, oh excuse me. Uh, the floor plan of the building, um, the, the bottom part is uh, facing southeast, so that's facing uh, the off ramp. So you, you come into the building, there's a vestibule on the, the south or the southeast side of it. And as you come into the building, you walk across the uh, Floor it simulates a basketball floor. The flooring is a very durable terrazzo product, a lot like you see in school buildings that can last a very long time. And that, that space gives an opportunity for uh, um, uh, telling the story of Indiana basketball through um, memorabilia, uh, banners on the walls, and uh, somebody visiting. And, you know, we get a chance to show off a little bit in terms of what Indiana basketball really means. And you know, part of the reason basketball was selected was. Partially because on the eastern side of Indiana, in this area, there's Newcastle, Richmond, and the I-70 corridor has a lot of the old time uh, North Central Conference high school teams that, that built, built a lot of the tradition of Indiana high school basketball. And in the northern part of it, uh, or northwestern part of it, you can see the, the restrooms and all of the, the service components of it. Uh, next slide. The view from the inside, kind of up in the rafters, so to speak, looking down at the floor. And the floor next to me, and I mentioned it being made out of terrazzo. Next slide. Another view looking up. The, the ceiling would be a, a wood deck. A lot of glass, tinted, tinted glass, very energy efficient. Next slide. Just some more interior views. And uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Keith to talk about some of the site amenities. Next slide. So a lot of the site amenities are complementing what's happening inside the building on the exterior. So this is just an overall site plan um, that we've seen uh, previously, but color showing where the building welcome center will be located and some of the amenities around it. So if you go to the next slide, it zooms in more. So as you come in, you saw from some of those renderings, well, we have welcome plaza. The two 12 foot tall sculptures of Mr. and Mrs. Uh, high School Basketball representing them. It would be a grove of trees, a lot of soft landscaping material, places to sit, relax as you go into the building. It would be a dog park, uh, in the lower kind of left corner there, right corner. Uh, up above, we have a playground where we'll have a basketball uh, quad uh, basketball, like at the Children's uh, Museum in Indianapolis has. And there'll actually be basketballs out there, so if kids want to play or families want to take a break and play basketball, they can. Uh, there'll be swing sets, there'll be large play climbing structures, there'll be adult fitness, uh, exercise bikes, equipment, there'll be a picnic shelter, as Mike mentioned, two picnic shelters, and then the trail that goes up into the north into the woods. Uh, we'll also have lots of places for people to sit, uh, drinking fountains, really trying to get people to get outside, engage with the uh, outdoor activities and the amenities. And then this is a massive site, so a lot of the actual landscape material that's going down will be native prairie. We're kind of restoring what was once there. We're adding lots of new trees, a lot of native trees. So this site is really about kind of reforesting where we can, bringing in new native uh, meadows to bring back what used to be there with ecology, and then providing visitors a lot of amenities uh, for the outside area. So that's uh, the outside area on the basketball floor. Yeah.
everything needs to uh, be at least postmarked by May 31st. The ICP have lots of ways to comment. You make written comments tonight. You can take comment sheets home with you and mail those in later. So please, by May 31st, um, all those comments uh, will be given equal consideration, regardless of how you make them. Whether you write them out tonight, put them in the mail, um, or make verbal comments tonight here at the hearing. That is also uh, an opportunity as well to make comments. And once we get those comments in, evaluate them, uh, the designers will take all those comments into consideration. Uh, those will uh, be incorporated into my draft environmental document and part of the public record uh, of comments and presentation that we had here tonight. Um, and then the environmental document will uh, be approved with all the public information in there that we presented here tonight in comments. The proposed construction for the project is fall 2024 to fall 2026. And at that time, the existing, the Welcome Center will be closed to motorists and there will be advanced signage put up on 70 westbound where motorists, the Welcome Center will be closed during that construction time period. So as I just described, public comment options, um, you can write them here and leave them. There is a plastic tub out there on the table. You can also submit your comments via email to the project team members. Uh, and MTAS and Mr. McAvoy over here um, verbal comments will be accepted at the hearing, and also MTAS and Mr. McAvoy's uh, email addresses are in your information packet as well. We just request that those comments be submitted by May 31st, and all those comments will be documented as the official public record and rolled into the environmental document. And as I explained, all comment options are equally considered and evaluated. Project resource locations, again, as I mentioned in the beginning, all these project materials that we covered tonight are still available for your review until May 31st during that two-week comment period after tonight. And again, uh, the NDOT project uh, webpage from the Greenfield District has all this information. Uh, the hard copies are also available at their district office in Greenfield and at the Morrison Reeves Library in Richmond. And again, contact information for our presenters tonight is included in your information packet. And uh, yeah, I think that kind of concludes it. At this point, who uh, I think we have one individual.